Hello and welcome to Azure Everyday. I'm Kirill Perian and in today's video we're going to go back to the basics of data modeling and we're going to talk about everyone's favorite topic, slowly changing dimensions. What are they? Typically a data set that you have uh, is going to contain your fact tables and your dimension tables. Dimensions defi basically define what you want to analyze or slice your facts by, such as calendar with its hierarchy, geography with its hierarchy, uh, customers, stores, employees, sales channels, etc. We know the fact tables change very rapidly and dimensions stay pretty consistent. Well, believe it or not, um, the data in those tables can sometimes change as well. Uh, what types of changes are we talking about? How do we handle those changes? That's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, there are three types of changes, one, two, and three, for simplicity. But type three is a lot less common, so we're going to talk about type one and two today. Type one occurs uh, when we just want to overwrite the data and it's not necessary to preserve the history. In other words, when changes in data source are detected, uh, type one um, always reflects the current values, right? Or type one change, I should say. Uh, when can this happen? This can happen when there's a data error that needs to be corrected. And for instance, if an employee date, uh, um, date of birth was entered incorrectly, we just go to the employee dimension table, update the date of birth there, and basically we're done. We don't care if historical records have changed or any reporting has been affected. It was wrong anyway, right? So we just want to make it right. Type two uh, change is a little bit more interesting and a little bit more complex. We need to basically preserve history in this in this respect. For example, if the customer changes their address, person changes their location or even their name, right? Um, how do you want to handle that from the data perspective, right? Well, um, that's where we need to make sure there's a versioning of the dimension numbers. Uh, what do we mean by that? Uh, well, let's just say our customer Sally has moved to a different state and changed her address. In this case, we need two versions of Sally depending on when the change occurred. A uh, natural key for Sally, such as her social security number, for example, won't help us in that regard. Now we need a surrogate key that uniquely identifies each version of Sally. So um, if we need to run a report on shipments by state, for example, we know the Sally moved to a different state, we then appropriately show shipments to the same customer going to two different states. And if the the source system doesn't store versions, then most likely the data warehouse load process will detect those changes. If there is a data warehouse, right? If there's no data warehouse, it says something to be aware of as you're building your reporting solution. Um, it would also be a good idea to add the range validity of the version of Sally, such as start date and end date columns, and maybe a flag uh, column that states which is the current version of Sally. Well, that concludes our video. Hopefully this was helpful to you and um, thank you so much for your interest and for being with me today. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below and I hope to see you soon.